Hi, I'm Dustin with Pro AV School, and I want to tell you about a new course that I'm launching. It's called the TLDR Method. Now, it's for Crestron programmers, but why do I call it TLDR? Uh, basically, TLDR, you've seen it on the internet, on Reddit and stuff, means too long, didn't read. You've got this big, huge, long um, section of text, and people don't want to read it, they just want a summary. So I figured, you know, I need a good name for this, and I need something that's going to be kind of recognizable and memorable. And I also need something that sort of makes sense in the context and TLDR kind of condenses things. And what I want to do with the TLDR method for Crestron programmers is to sort of condense all these different ideas of how to set up a program and kind of put it all together. So what does that mean for you? It basically means I can make you a better Crestron programmer by following sort of a guideline to get your programs built. I've gone through the Crestron training myself um, it's been a couple of years, so things are always changing and evolving, and their training is great. Um, but I feel that there's like this gap where they teach you all these little tidbits of stuff. They'll teach you different parts of logic. They'll teach you how to manipulate strings and pull out data that you need. These are all things that you need to know as a programmer, but it seems to kind of lack a good flow, a good way of kind of putting all your logic together in a way that not only works, but makes sense and is scalable, reproducible, easier to debug, and all that good stuff. So TLDR actually means something too. It's kind of the, the process that I go through, working with the touch panels, and then the logic, and then the devices, and it gives you the results. So I need to get that R in there. Um, so let me just switch over here, and I'm gonna show you what we're talking about with the TLDR method. So right now I've got a beta version of the course going. I'm trying to get about eight to 10 people, about half full, maybe three quarters full right now at the time of watching. Um, to get here, you can go proevschool.com slash TLDR and it'll bring you to this page um, and you can sign up. This is a reduced rate at 275. It's going to go up once the course gets kind of finalized. And what I want to do with this beta group is go through the content figure out the best way to present it and ways that'll help solidify the understanding. And now I'll just talk a little bit about what it is. It serves as a template to build Crestron systems. I'm not gonna read all the text here, you can do that yourself. Why you need it, we have already kind of talked about that. Um, some of the key concepts, we're gonna be talking about naming conventions, stuff that's, it's not, really that complicated, but if you do it in a way that makes things easier to understand, it makes it easier to replace, search and replace. It makes, makes it easier to copy and paste and move stuff to different projects and also come back to your stuff later and understand what the heck you were trying to do. I try to decouple interface logic with device logic. And basically that means that I want the touch panels to flip pages on their own. I don't want everything kind of jam together because that starts to cause problems. I try to abstract things a bit from physical hardware and by that I mean kind of removing the exact device so it's not so intertwined so that you could replace it with a different device. That means you can reuse some some bits of code that you've done before. Now we talk about modularization where we can put stuff into modules where it makes sense to do so. Uh, we also talk about time-based logic. If you're relying on time and waiting a certain number of seconds, well, depending on what's happening, that time is may or may not be accurate. And I found that that can lead to bugs later on down the road, stuff that's kind of hard to figure out, just weird problems, and you have to go back to the site and fix stuff, when if you had worked out the right number of logic waves to wait, or did things in a logic wave format, then that's always gonna be constant, regardless of how fast or slow the processor is running based on the load that's on it. The other thing I do is simulation. Basically, without being on site, I can be reasonably confident that my code is going to work, or at least um, a good percent of it, percentage of it is good. So all this basically is designed to help you become a better programmer. And it's for people that already have a bit of background in Crestron. I don't want to say that you have to be at this level to be benefiting from this course because I think everybody benefits from starting with a good game plan. I'm also not saying that TLDR is the only way you should program Crestron. Everybody has their own own way but I find by default there isn't really a way and 
you don't really know how to make it up. So you just kind of string things together. And for me, I found through the years, I realized, oh, this is why I should do things a certain way because it prevents these types of problems that I keep having. And these are some of the concepts that I'm basically boiling down the experience that I've got by doing, I don't know how many, hundreds of systems, just different types of systems and different types of environments and stuff, and kind of boiling it down into a set of guidelines and principles that will help you kind of as a starting point and keep you keep you honest to yourself, keep you honest, I guess, to the program that you're following the right a methodology that's going to get you to the finish line. So you might have seen in other languages, if, you're, if you've experienced much programming at all, um, design patterns, something called the model view controller. I don't know if it's called a methodology or a framework. Um, I know it's called a design pattern or referred to. This is kind of my attempt at bringing something like that into the Crestron world. So it's, it's not stuff that's based on the newest technologies. It's not stuff about simple sharp. Honestly, I'm not really that good with C sharp myself. I'm learning, but I'm not the guy at this point to teach you about C sharp. We're not even going to go there. This is about simple windows and vision tools pro E. Um, we'll throw in some smart graphics because they're there with vision tools pro E and this will give you a good way to basically approach programming a Crestron system. So if you're interested, I encourage you to sign up because we're going to go through this course together um, for about four to six weeks. I haven't decided exactly how long it's going to run. It's going to start in mid-March. And so that's in a couple weeks here. And I'm trying to get, get some people on board. And you'll have the ability to ask a bunch of questions. We'll do a weekly video of the content. And then we'll also have a weekly live session where you can basically have any questions that you come across um, addressed. And if you're not available, I know it's kind of hard to get people on live sometimes. The nature of programming, you're kind of busy. Um, I'll take the questions by email or some other format and address them all. And these uh, calls will be recorded as well so that you can have access to them just inside our group. It's not going to be something that's used. I'll use the content as I launch this again, but I'm not going to use your calls and stuff like that. So anyways, I encourage you if you're interested in upping your game as a Crestron programmer, and you're not already stuck in, I shouldn't say stuck, if, if you're comfortable with the way that you're doing things and you don't really feel that there's a need to change, I don't want to be the one to say you must do it this way. Um, this is more for people that don't really know what the best way is and hey, here's a good way. It's going to get you 99% of the way there and it's going to solve you a ton of problems that you might not even realize you're going to have. So anyways, check it out. Uh, proavschool.com slash tldr thanks i'll also be um, getting back on the content creation uh, wagon i guess you could say here with some programming tips and stuff on youtube um, i've been kind of tied up with projects and stuff and then with these courses but i've got a whole list of content that i'm going to start releasing here in the next coming weeks so anyways we'll see you around thanks for watching